All right, welcome back. About 10 minutes to break down the draft with Dave Schumann of uh, NUCSports.com. Great football evaluator. And is this like Christmas Eve for you, the night before the draft? The only, the only other time that's as good as National Signing Day for me. So. Okay, that's a good point. That's a good point. As you watch, tomorrow's like Christmas Day for me. You know why? Because we don't have to deal with any of these mock drafts anymore. Because once a team makes a trade, Dave, you know this better than me, those mock drafts are as valuable as a seven-day weather forecast. Yeah, every every prediction goes right out the window. Absolutely. When you watch kids being talked about in this year's draft, is there is there one kid, one position that kind of sticks out for you as kind of a, a something that you don't agree with at all or you think people are being misled in one direction or another? Um, I, well, I think quarterback this year is the one that creates the most controversy uh, just because of different personalities that are there, quarterback, and, and the rise and fall of several guys like Teddy Bridgewater falling so potentially so far down and, um, you know, the rise of Johnny Manziel and the controversy always around uh, what people feel is controversial about him and Blake Bortles, who really probably came out of nowhere and all of a sudden – is thought of as being, you know, one of the top two draft picks uh, potentially in the draft. Um, if you were going to rate those three, how would you, how do you rate them? Uh, I, I would go Johnny Mandel, uh, Blake Bortles, and then yeah, I mean Bridgewater right now looks like he could be going, you know, far past other guys like uh, Garofalo and and others. So, um, you know, it's it's one of those things where he's he's unfortunately kind of dropped down based off of that workout that he had and. And uh, it's been hard for him to recover from that. Jimmy Garofalo, the kid out of Eastern Illinois. What do you like about him? Well, I mean, he's been very productive. Uh, even though he, he played at the uh, the one double A level, I call it still one double A. Right. Uh, it goes back to my UConn days when we were one double A. And <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, absolutely. He he really was fantastic uh, leading the team to the national championship game. Um, I thought that he shows incredibly quick release, and his decision making uh, has proven to be second to none. If you watch him on, on, on his game film, so I think that's where he's really separated himself uh, from the pack, uh, from a guy that nobody really knew about to being one of you know, potentially one of the top five quarterbacks that are taken uh, in the draft. Do you rate him ahead of the car kid from Fresno? Um, he's right. At this, it's depending on preference. He is even to me with Carr. So um, it's really going to depend. You know, the draft is going to depend on who wants what and what right. they like. But, but to me, he's really on par with Carr. And Carr's a guy that uh, he could end up being in, the, in late in the first round, uh, most likely early second round. Do you, do, how, what position, what, what team, Jacksonville, Cleveland, I wouldn't think the Raiders, although you never know with them. Um, although somebody's got Bucky Brooks as Bortles going five to the to the Raiders. What what, what is, do you think is the absolute top spot that a quarterback, be it Manziel or Bortles, will go? I think four with uh, the Browns. Right. Um, it, again, they could try. Depending on how much they think, I don't think anybody's going to go quarterback up beyond four because. Um, uh, the, fir- the first guy is, is, is going to be clowny um, unless someone really uh, has some kind of weakness in their brain that day. <laughs> um, clowny will be number one. Uh, Greg Robinson from Auburn probably will be number two. And uh, the guy who's really moved up incredibly is uh, the Buffalo linebacker, Philo Mack. So right. I-, I think the first time you'll see a quarterback go potentially is, 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 is to the Browns. Not necessarily a lock because Sammy Watkins is really the wild card in all of this. Mm-hmm. Because because some people have Sammy Watkins rated as high as as uh, Jasmine Clowney as a prospect. So um, that means that he could potentially he he's a guy that could be the disruptive one that changes things around depending on how much value people see in Sammy Watkins. Talking with. Uh... Uh, Dave Schumann, uh, you can track him. Uh, his Twitter handle is uh, at NUC Football, or you can uh, follow him on NUCSports.com. Um, let's go to the locals. Uh, the Giants pick 12. I've been a Giants fan since I was five, which means 55 years. And it, it seems like 
the the offensive line has never been worse, even in the dark days of 66 through 84, than it was last year. Which guy do you think can fall through the cracks to get them at 12? And let me ask you this, too. If the tight end from North Carolina is is available, do you think they go in that direction instead? Well, there's, been, uh, uh, there's two interesting things. Number one, um, I, I think you have to look at uh, Zach Martin, is Notre Dame lineman. I mean, there's, there's several linemen that, that you can look at that are right around that time period that they I think they have to take a lineman if they can. If somehow a guy like Greg Robinson fell through the cracks, I mean, you have to take him. Um, short of that, uh, Eric Ebron would be a fantastic pick, I think, for the Giants. But but there's been some uh, interesting stuff going around about him uh, where the Giants aren't too sure about whether they should take him or not. But I know this, and this is a little-known fact of Nody Ebron since he was in high school, and he's actually a guy that was uh, you know, born in New Jersey, and, and, and his favorite team is the Giants. Mm-hmm. So, so there you go. Right. You know, if, if they have that opportunity, it's really do they think the lineman uh, is, is the most valuable pick for them. I think in their situation, you've got to take a lineman. Uh, Jets pick 18th. They need a wide receiver. Obviously, a guy like Mike Evans is going to be long gone by then, you would think. And and certainly Watkins will be gone by then. Who's the next good receiver, Dave? Who they should be focused on? Odell Beckham uh, from LSU. He's all you know. He could end up being around at that time period. Um, he, there there's some that think he could be going 14 or 15. But if Odell Beckham's around, you got to take him. Uh, he's a guy with track man speed. Uh, he was very productive this past year at LSU. He came in, you know, as a high school player with with, with a lot of fan, uh, fanfare, and I think he's a guy that could can make an impact right away. If he's around at that time period, I think you have to take him. Do you think the Benjamin kid would be around then, the Florida State kid? Benjamin kid will definitely, in my opinion, be around. The only questions with with Benjamin is speed. Um, I think his size is fantastic. He's got great hands. He's very athletic. He's enormous. There's no doubt about it. Um, and he could play like that hybrid, really, because he's big enough to play that hybrid tight end spot, too. Um, you could use him in that way. So, But he potentially may, you know, he def- I would say he's definitely going to be around. Mm-hmm. And uh, he may be a guy that you can grab possibly in the second round. I mean, he's, most people think he's going to be an early second round pick. I, I would rather have, personally, Odell Beckham, just because of the speed and the and the impact of that at the NFL uh, over Benjamin. It seems that all the experts think the Pats at 29 will go de-tackling. I know on, on one site they're unanimous about Rashid Hagman from Minnesota, who I guess, Dave, from reading some of the – this kid's a freak. Yeah, 6'6", six, six, I think. Uh, you know, three builds. He, he is enormous. He tested incredibly well. Uh, he's a freak. I think that's the guy. If he's around, that they're going to take. Um, there, there are several other. But I think they're going to go lineman one way or the other, uh, defense or offense. If, if they don't take him, but if he's around, that's who they're going to take. We got about a minute to go. Why? Why over the last couple of years are running backs not even considered to be first round draft picks? My favorite question. My favorite question. And, and I'll tell you why. Because of the value of the passing game has changed in a lot of GM's mind the value of the running back. And the second thing is the injuries that come about to the running back. Mm. Most guys don't last very long. Even the best guys have had problems. And you could lose a guy potentially for a whole season. And they two platoon guys a lot. I uh, uh, use two running backs at, uh, at all times. So... They, they all, almost all hedge their bets as far as from a running back standpoint. They split the carries now to kind of preserve them, so the value would definitely drop. Now, you watch Seattle, and you saw uh, what they were able to do with their running back, and you say, well, there has to be value with, you know, to the running back. Running backs present tremendous value in the time that they're able to play, but they have such a short lifespan, so their draft value definitely has dropped. Who's, your, who's the top running back? In your opinion, is it the, uh, the the kid from Baylor? 
Uh, I actually, you know, I actually like Trey Mason. Really? I actually like Trey Mason. Wow. And, and, and uh, dude, a lot of people like Late Sea Trunk and, and uh, from Baylor. That, if that's who you're talking about, right? Um, but it's I like the way Trey Mason runs. I like his his body type, and I I think he's a guy that would hold up well to the physicality uh, of the NFL. Uh, you, you see you see guys that have his type of frame be able to absorb uh, to absorb the hits very very well. Late Street Sea Trunk. Is a guy that came onto the scene bursting on late. He was a first team high school American, you know, when he was young, uh, and then kind of wallowed in the abyss at Oregon, and then uh, it came out to Baylor and exploded. I, I still would have questions about late Seastrong's uh, durability, uh, and uh, is he is he still committed the way that he should be? David, uh, we got to run. We got to hit the Red Sox. Thank you for your input. I appreciate thanks. it. Great Thank stuff. You. Dave Schumann, you can follow him at NUC Footballer, NUCSports.com.